first. Um, this is the book that Michelle Alexander was talking about that she's written. And when I first picked it up, I would read two or three pages, and I'd have to put it down. Because Pardon so me. You're going to have to speak up oh. because it's, we don't have a microphone yet. Okay. When I first picked up the book, uh, I would read three or four pages, and I'd have to put it down because I found it so disturbing. I would recommend that everybody in this room read it, however, because it's, uh, it's very uh, revealing about our criminal justice system. Yeah which, in my opinion, is broken, uh, in the opinion of a lot of people, is broken. One of the issues, I'm not going to talk a long time because I want, we want to take um, questions uh, that were raised by the film, but one of the points that was not mentioned uh, in the portion that we saw was uh, the uh, prison profiteering. When I was in uh, high school and, and uh, college, I was under the impression that the 13th Amendment abolished uh, uh, slavery. But in fact, it sort of codified it because it says, if, if, you know, slavery is illegal except for persons who have been convicted of a crime. And so now, with this mass incarceration that is uh, going on right now, we have uh, over a million people, or two million people, who are essentially slaves. And there are several corporations in the United States, uh, CCA, the Corrections Corporation of America, and uh, Wackenhut, who uh, actually have lobbyists in Washington trying to create more crimes so that they can incarcerate more people because that's, that's the source of their profit. So when we look at this mass incarceration, we have to keep in mind that as long as there's a, a profit motive uh, driving this, that it's going to be very difficult uh, to get rid of this. Uh, mandatory sentencing has also obviously contributed to um, this mass incarceration. And um, so that, you know, we see more and more people. I think at this point there are 2.3 million people who are uh, behind bars. I got into this work uh, through my volunteer work with the NAACP back in 2000, and I've been um, I've been visiting death row inmates since about 2000. And I was really a, a, a you know I, that's where I became uh, interested and involved uh, because I started hearing stories about the police misconduct. Um, prosecutorial misconduct, and so forth that goes on in the criminal justice system. And just as the, the gentleman in the film said, you know, I was under the impression before I got involved in this work that, you know, people who were in prison deserve to be there. But as I talked to more and more people, I found out that, in fact, a lot of people were there because of, uh, you know, the mandatory sentencing, police misconduct, uh, prosecutorial misconduct, judicial bias uh, is, is a big factor. And as Michelle Alexander uh, mentioned, discretion is at the heart of a lot of this. And I think that, I think that the system is driven by racism because uh, we've never, as a country, we've never dealt with the impact of slavery. And even though it's, we're quite a ways from slavery, which ended in, uh, theoretically ended in 1865, um, we're, we, we've never really as come together as a country to really talk about slavery and the effects that it has had psychologically on all of us. Uh, not just black people, but white people as well. And I think we have to have a conversation, uh, just as they did in, in South Africa, um, with their race and reconciliation uh, process, um, we have to, at some point, deal with the psychological effects that slavery has had on all of us. And I think until we do that, we will not stop being indifferent to the suffering of people who are incarcerated. And that's a lot, that is what's driving a lot of this mass incarceration indifference. So I'll turn it over.